Welcome to this talk on veterinary interprofessional teamwork. The concept of interprofessional education, that is, the education of members of two or more professions together, has been growing within healthcare for several years. Interprofessional education allows doctors to prepare for future work with members of all of the groups shown here. For example, they may practice clinical skills using simulations with anaesthetists and nurses. However, the consideration of interprofessional working, learning and education is still pretty new in veterinary medicine. For a long time, veterinary practice and veterinary education has focused on just one group, the veterinary surgeon. We've trained vets separately and we've blamed vets individually for any mistakes in practice. However, it's been many years since vets truly worked and learned on their own. It's far more likely that a vet will also work alongside members of other professions and occupations. The biggest of which, certainly in the UK, is veterinary nurses. Thanks to the Royal Charter, which came into effect in early 2015, Veterinary nurses are now recognised as a profession in their own right in the UK, raising their status to that similar to vets. This didn't come out of the blue and is something that the veterinary nurse population has been working towards for a long time. For example, a register was brought in in 2007 and disciplinary procedures in 2011. Nurses are subject to their own RCVS Guide to Professional Conduct. They must complete set amounts of CPD and must swear an oath on graduation, just as vets do. Together, this all means that veterinary nurses are responsible for their own actions. The buck no longer automatically stops with the vet, as it were. However, nurses still work under the direction of a veterinary surgeon in many instances. So interprofessional working between these two professions may be challenging, as the once well-established hierarchy within the veterinary team, with vets at the top, may begin to change or dissolve, and new issues such as joint blame and what to do when the professions disagree evolve. It's not only veterinary nurses the use veterinary surgeons will work alongside. Increasingly commonly, practices will employ practice managers and HR managers to take on the business aspects of practice. And they'll almost certainly have receptionists to provide a front of house role. Together, all these groups can provide a service which is better than that which vets alone could produce. It's really important, therefore, that vets know how to work with other groups in order to get the best out of everybody. It was with this in mind that I conducted initial research into interprofessional education at the Royal Veterinary College with some excellent colleagues from the Nursing School and LIVE, the Lifelong Independent Veterinary Education Centre. And subsequently I started a PhD back in 2012 regarding interprofessional working in practice in order to inform education. Through this short e-lecture, I'd like to encourage you all to reflect upon interprofessional team working. I'll highlight a few areas for you to think about and then make some suggestions for ways to consider interprofessional working during your studies. It should be noted that interprofessional education can include veterinary surgeons learning with and about healthcare providers and environmentalists, for example, with a One Health focus. Or it could include groups outside the core team but that still work with animals, such as farriers, equine dentists, animal behaviourists, farmers, so on. However, we're going to concentrate on the core veterinary team itself those groups who work together daily in practice. So when working within any team, it's important that everyone knows the role they're expected to play. This is especially important in veterinary field where there are rules about who can be asked to do what. However, let me start this section by saying I believe it's important for some flexibility in rules and duties based on experience in order to allow the right person the opportunity to take the lead in certain situations. For example, Imagine an RTA comes into your practice where you as a new grad have been working for just a few months. You're there with just one veterinary nurse who's very experienced having been there for about 10 years. It's unreasonable to say that just because you are a veterinary surgeon that you must take the leadership role in this situation. The nurse has seen it and done it before within this specific context so you should make the most of their experience. So having said that, veterinary surgeons must understand a nurse's position in terms of what roles they can legally perform. This largely comes down to the Schedule 3 Amendment of the Veterinary Surgeons Act, which came into place in 2002, allowing registered or student veterinary nurses who are vet employees to carry out limited veterinary surgery. However, you should also appreciate that a large part of a nurse's duties will not actually come under this legal amendment, a nurse has far more responsibilities than just the tasks identified in Schedule 3. But if you do look at the RCVS's Guide to Professional Conduct regarding Schedule 3 and delegation to nurses, You'll see there are three areas where they specify a nurse's potential role. Maintenance and monitoring of anaesthesia, vaccination of companion animals and dentistry. So in essence, a nurse can induce anaesthesia by a specific quantity of medicine which has been already directed by a vet. 
Nurses may assist the vet in maintaining anaesthesia, for example by moving dials, and they may carry out the monitoring of the patient. However, the responsibility of maintaining and monitoring still lies with the vet. For vaccinations, certification rules apply, so if the vet is to certify the vaccination, they tend to do it themselves, but nurses may administer first and subsequent vaccinations. Given that the animal is under a vet's care, the vet has clinically assessed the animal and then directed the nurse to do so. Nurses may carry out routine dental hygiene work, which includes scales and polishes, but doesn't include extractions which are outside the definition of limited veterinary surgery. Again, it's not only nurses' roles which you must become familiar with. Receptionists' roles are vast, including not only booking appointments and greeting clients, but also the tasks that are shown here. Their roles vary between practices, and even sometimes within branches of a single practice, maybe according to individual vet surgeons' preferences. However, it's more helpful for a receptionist to have the same role across the branches and with different vets, so try and stick to practice protocols to make receptionists' life easier. Practice managers and other administrators are relatively new positions and their roles are evolving all the time. They're also varied, including organising holidays, finance management, looking after practice car fleets, health and safety and many more. You'll need to try and understand what their roles are within the practice that you work in. There are several tips I've heard about working within an interprofessional practice. They are pretty much common sense but they're worth pointing out so they're always clear in your mind. For example, try and make life as easy as possible for each other. One way a vet can do this is to help tidy up as they go along. Nurses are always really thankful for vets who do this. Communication is absolutely vital. Everyone working on a case needs to be in the know with almost all aspects of it. Interprofessional communication has been identified as a massive source of medical error within healthcare. These communication faults may involve, for example, forgetting to tell someone something verbally, forgetting to note something on the records, giving the wrong information, not checking understanding of something, and failing to speak up if you see a, a superior making an error. Nurses may get a lot of information from the client, which the client didn't have time or didn't choose to tell you as the vet in the consultation room. Be aware of this and ask your nurses to share this information with you. Be willing to ask for help and advice from those in the know, whatever profession they belong to. It's not what you communicate that's a whole thing, it's also the way you communicate that's important. So ask people to do things rather than telling them, check their understanding, and be friendly. So within your veterinary school, you may or may not have the opportunity to engage in a limited amount of formal interprofessional education. While this continues to be considered by the schools and hopefully gets more formally introduced into your curriculum, it's a good idea for you to make use of informal education opportunities to practice interprofessional working and to learn about other groups. You can start as soon as you finish the C lecture. Take a moment to reflect back on interprofessional working you've seen or been part of during work experience or placements. Can you think of some really good examples of teamwork? There are bound to be professionals out there who you will have seen or will soon see who are role models of exemplary professional behaviour. Look out for these people, think about what makes them so good at interprofessional working and try to include these behaviours in your work. Can you also think of an example of an interprofessional issue that you've seen in practice? Can you think how the situation may have been handled differently? When you're next in practice, think about the issue of roles and duties. When you get the chance, offer to help qualified veterinary nurses, for example. Ask them about their training, their work experience, the specialist area of interest, the roles they currently do, and where they might like to expand. The more you know about their potential roles and abilities, the better you'll be informed with who to go to to ask for advice. Build up good relationships with nurses, and you'll be able to ask them to help you to learn something new, for example. But remember, it's not just nurses. Try and have a chat with the receptionist, the managers, the administrators. You learn a lot about the practice as a whole by finding out about their roles and opinions. Communicating with colleagues has been identified as one of the most important skills that a new grad must have. So when you're back in your veterinary school and going through your normal communication skills training, think about how this might apply to interprofessional communication. You'll most probably come across situations throughout your working life where you will have to have difficult conversations with colleagues. Try and think about the transferable skills you're practicing at university. If you're lucky enough to be studying at a school with veterinary nurses on site and you're feeling proactive, why not start an interprofessional social group? Or make a point of inviting nursing students along to pre-existing groups such as business, animal welfare or equine groups. Even if you're not at a school with nursing students, you'll probably see them during your placements. It can be the case that you're both trying to practice the same hands-on tasks, 
but try and work together rather than feeling like you're competing. Most importantly, when you're in practice, remember you're part of a team. You're not going it alone. There are people out there who have knowledge and experience and are more than willing to share it with you. Make the most of them, not only now as students, but throughout your career, whatever their profession. So in summary, interprofessional working is not something you can avoid and is something you should make use of. Despite the fact that you're not often formally taught with students of other professions or occupations, it's important that you consider the concept of interprofessional working and what it will mean to you. So here are some articles that you might like to read regarding One Health and interprofessional education in healthcare and some of the papers we've started to write about veterinary initiatives. You can also use the interactive online tool to further your thoughts on interprofessional working, learning and education that we've created, which can be found at the link at the bottom of this page. Okay, thank you very much for listening.